All right, so we've got a site that's come back to life. This is how we left it last week. This is Victor's Bakery. We're going to add e-commerce features to it. And remember all that we did last month, talking about widgets and plugins and, and all of that. So what we want to do is um, talk about uh, what, what I've got laid out in the syllabus. Uh, one thing, however, before we get to that point, uh, do you recall that when I showed examples of some of our clients, they have a couple different styles of sites. One example right here, this is actually my, well, let me show this professional one, uh, vmcinc.net slash, well, um, okay, I'll show this one. Um, this site that I'm going to load up here is in the classic style of a blog, which is what we have on our WordPress. We have a site that the latest article pushes down the older article. That's exactly what we've got here. Our homepage has this article, this blog post, which is pushing down this older one, which is pushing down an older one, etc. This is the classic behavior of WordPress. That's what this particular site also does, this example site. This other site for a client that we worked with, we built them a, um, a WordPress site. And this one is what you would call a static home page. Uh, yes, it's got the slideshow that, that spins and all of that that entices you, entices you, but the main content on the home page is not a blog <coughs> that pushes the latest stuff down. The front page is always static. It can be changed, of course, but there's no blog on the home page pushing down the older stuff. This is a static home page. I'm going to show you how to create one of these in a moment. We don't have one of these yet. Again, we have the default WordPress, which is the blog method. And then in the middle, of those two, which is which is a <coughs> classic blog or static site, in the middle would be a hybrid site, which would be this client over here. This client has a static home page as well as blog content. So it's got a, a slideshow, but again, that's not the, the meaning of what static is. It's what's the content. This stuff up here doesn't change that often. Um, private events, that's not going to change. This, this blurb right here is not going to change. A lot of this stuff is not going to change. But there is still the blog right here. So in this corner, the latest blog posts are pushing down the older ones. This is the hybrid style. So we can make some notes here. Yes? I would you say that type would be better for... What's the criteria that makes it so that you want a static, a hybrid, or a it's going to depend a lot about what you're trying to do on your site. For example, this site over here is all about writing something new and maybe getting money off of affiliate links in, in writing in blogs and such. So something new needs to be put on a regular basis that would lean more toward the uh, classic blog or possibly hybrid. The one over here, over here where that's, that site's not really going to change at all. It's, this site is focusing on the food, come to the restaurant, eat. It's not a big presence online. Therefore, the home page here is static in that it shows the most important stuff right away. Address, phone number, hours. So what you're going to choose depends on how you're going to use your site. And then these guys over here, well, they've got a lot going on. They've been on TV. They have catering options and all of that. So there's things that you want to show often on a regular basis. And then there are new things you want to show once in a while. That piece of block, that block part, I would see that as being a spot where, or a type of site, they don't do a lot of blocking. They yeah. Just give a couple of items and Exactly. Just... Yeah, that would be a good idea. Uh, if you're not going to do a lot of blogging, this is not going to focus on your blogging a lot, so it might not be the best. This is basically a widget added to a sidebar to show the latest blog post. I like that. Thank you. Comment? Question? Yes. Sir. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but you can tell Google 
to index your site every day if you want. However, they don't have to adhere to that. They can index it whenever they want. And if your site changes a lot, they'll adhere to that indexing every day. But if it doesn't, they start slipping your times. So it may not index it for three days or a week or something. And you'll have things that change during that time period that don't get caught up in Google search. Well, again, that the want something that changes at least occasionally. Yeah. Well, yes and no, but uh, if you if you want something that changes occasionally, which is requires the investment of changing your site, of the blogging and such. So if you're a particular site like this, they're not engaging in any blogging. It's not updating that often. But because of uh, the presence of social media and other ancillary things, it still gets ranked on Google very well. It might not get checked by Google, indexed by Google that often, but what it has there still helps them get found a lot. So it's really going to come back to the to the purpose of your site. What do you want to do on your site? Do you need to add content a lot? Not that often or once in a while. So we will we will create a static kind of site or hybrid in just a moment. But the default is that WordPress gives us a a blog site. So I was pointing right here styles styles of WordPress sites. I would call it static, hybrid, and blog, or classic blog. So static is that elements on the home page don't change much. <coughs> blog is elements on the home page change often. And then hybrid, a mixture of the two. And blog is what we get by default. We will be able to set static in just a moment. Hybrid is a little more complicated. It depends on a variety of things, oftentimes the theme and the plugins. So let's see how we can set this. The way that the way that we need to set this up is placeholders. By default, all the blog posts go on the home page. I want to create a placeholder for all my blogs to exist on that screen. And then I need a placeholder screen for my home page. So wherever you're at, I'm in the I'm in the front end of the site. Let's go back to the dashboard if you're not already there. Then go to the dashboard. Let's hover over settings and select reading. And this is the secret right here. It's the very first item. Front page displays. It should be called what does the front page display? Does it display your latest posts or a static page? The default is your latest post. So if we write a brand new blog post, a brand new article, it'll push down the older ones. What I want is a static page, and you can click on that at some point to go read upon the WordPress site in more detail about explanation there. Let's say, okay, I want a static page, just like I'm saying. I want a home page that doesn't change too much. And it says, okay, great. What will be your template to display your front page? Select it. I don't have anything. I've got an about page. I've got a sample page. I need a home page to display on the front, which we'll create in a moment. And then it'll say, where would you like your posts to go? Your blog posts, your articles, select it. Well, I don't have one. I've got an about us page and a sample page. I need a blog page. So in order for this to work, we need those placeholders. We need placeholders for this content. So we can't set this yet. Let's create some page placeholders and then we can do this and this needs pages not posts remember WordPress gives us posts or pages and posts are the articles that change on a regular basis and the pages are the screens that don't change we've talked about that before hover over pages and select add a new It asks for a title, which we will call home, 
This can be called home, it can be called index, it could be called welcome, it could be called anything. Yes, because what will happen is once you click inside of the editing area, it will automatically change the permalink to lowercase. This is another reason why we set those permalinks, so that whatever title we put here gets added to the link instead of those gibberish numbers. We'll say something. We can change this, of course, as many times as we want, but we'll just quickly say, welcome to our site. What exactly to write in all of these pages is a much deeper discussion best served for the SEO class. So if you take my SEO class, I don't know when it's coming up next time, but it's in the catalog. Um, in that class we talk about uh, what to write on all of your pages to help you get found the best, what are all the tips and tricks, the do's and the don'ts to get found by the search engines. That discussion is better for that class. It's a three to five week long class, depending on the semester, where we get into that in detail. One tip to say is, be specific, be verbose, be wordy. So simply having this as, welcome to our site, is not very good SEO. That can be taken out of context and applied to any kind of website. A baking website, a realty website, a uh, tax prep website. So always be specific, be wordy. That's the content that you're creating for the search engines to find. And again, there's nuances to it that we learn in the other class. But here I would write something more like, welcome to our site. Uh, we have the best selection baked goods. Yeah, I'm just writing something. You don't have to write this, but I'm thinking in those terms of SEO. We have the best selection of baked goods in all of San Diego. Our... What's that? Our old world recipes meet a new generation of bakers. Just writing something. You don't have to write this. But what I'm saying here is these, I'm being specific, I'm being verbose and wordy because if you take the SEO class, the SEO class we talk about keywords. And we talk about when people search on Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever, they're searching for something specific. They're, they're typing keywords. And if your site is properly optimized with various keywords about what you think people might be searching for, you might be found. There is going to be a lot of competition if you're yet another web designer, yet another bakery, yet another realtor, yet another dog walker, yet another vegan organic fair trade <coughs> baker. But the more of these keywords that you write throughout your site, the more it'll help you get found. Maybe someone is looking for some of these keywords, old world recipes, or maybe gluten-free cookies. If you're writing these things throughout your pages, not just the home page, but the in the about page and the product page and the contact page, as you're writing all of these keywords throughout your site, that helps you get found. So I'll go back here, SEO tips. And meaningful keywords throughout your site, not just homepage. Meaningful keywords, that's the that's the operative word, of course, also meaningful. That they relate to what your business is, to what people are searching for, and add them intelligently and judiciously. Don't just cram the keywords of organic eggs in the about uh, in the contact page if it doesn't make sense so add those keywords throughout your site if they make sense to help your SEO rankings we can of course add pictures and a bunch of other things here but that's let's say this is enough for this point let's click publish so that now we have a placeholder that we can use the home page click publish and then we will create another page as a placeholder for our blog. <coughs> you may think, well, I'm not going to write a blog on my site. 
I highly recommend you write a blog on your site. You have a blog on your site. That is another SEO tip here. Blog on your site. This is that that we were saying earlier about is Google or Bing checking your site on a regular basis. If you're writing content on a regular basis, the search engines will see it, will find you, will index you, which is basically to store you in their database so someone can find you. If you change your site on a regular basis, the search engines might find you easier. Well, that doesn't mean change your logo and change your design and change your about page. That means create content on a regular basis in a blog. Write articles on your site. Take the blog class, which starts this week. It's either Tuesday or Wednesday. It's Wednesday? Okay, it's Wednesday. Wednesday, 12.30 noon. So if you've already got uh, a 12.30 noon open, come back on Wednesday, 12.30 to 4 p.m., and we're going to do the, the blog class. We're going to do brainstorming about what to write. For everyone that wants to, we will do brainstorming for your brand or product or whatever you have, and we'll figure out what you're going to write with a bunch of other advice and such. But the big advice for SEO that everyone's going to tell you is blog. How much to write and when to write and all that, we'll talk about it in the other class. But you want to think about writing on a regular basis on your site. And so I need a page for that, a placeholder page. I don't want it to take over my home page, which is the default I have now. I want it on its own page. So at the top, select Add New Page. We'll add a new page as our placeholder. And again, we can call this My Writings, or um, Blog, or The Idea Factory, whatever you want. But, as I said on my notes, calling it blog is the standard because here now the search engine will, will look, is there a blog page on your site? If you call it something else like writings from my mind to yours, well, the search engine might not find that as easy as simply blog. Uh, you can set your permalink to be simply blog and you can set your title to be writings from my mind to yours. <coughs> if you do that long name, make sure you have the short name on the actual permalink, which is editable right there. But by default, it'll take whatever you wrote in the title. All right here, uh, read our latest. This is Victor's Bakery, fictional fictional uh, company. What would you want to come back and read every month on this kind of site, a bakery site? What would you interest, be interested in reading about? Recipes. recipes. Read our latest recipes. That's fine. Read our latest organic recipes. Read our latest do-it-yourself articles. You know, something again. What are people writing, I mean searching for, to possibly help find you? What's the question? We didn't get this line for nothing. You will get it as soon as you click on the editing, the editor down here. Read our latest recipes. And then I'll publish it. Where's the edit link? Where's the what? Edit link. This one? No, sir. Sometimes this happens. It looks like if you don't get that permalink right away, if this doesn't appear here for some reason, you'll have to publish it and then it should appear. Right, so we've got a home page, placeholder, we've got a blog, placeholder. Those are the two things that we need in order to set ourselves to be a static home page. So remind me, where do I go again here to find that static home page screen? Settings. Reading. Let's go back to settings and reading. 
And now we have something that we can do here. I want my front page to display a static page. The front page placeholder will be home and the post page, the blogs, will be on the blog page. We couldn't do that before. We had no placeholders. But that's the big secret. People always ask, I thought you could only use WordPress for a blog. Well, they didn't know that you can create static pages like this. People say, I don't want WordPress because I don't, I don't have a blog. I want a static page. But they don't know that they can change it like this. When you change this, make sure at the bottom to click Save Changes. And then visit site. Once you save it, click on the top left of your name to visit site to see the result. And, um, Save that and then you'll visit site. And now the home page says home. Welcome to your site, whatever you wrote. And then it'll stay static. If I want to go read the blogs, I go to the blog page. Uh, I don't see a link to my blog page. What's wrong? It's not linked. My menu hasn't been updated to show that there's a new page. My menu is, is, is a manual menu. I have to tell it what to put into the menu. And I never told it there's a blog page. That's why I can't see it. The blog page does exist. You can go to the address blog. No one's ever going to think to type blog. They want a menu link. So that page does exist, but it's just not in our menu. Now, it was a long time ago last week. But uh, how do we edit our menu? Back to the dashboard. Appearance. Menus. Let's go back to the dashboard, hover over appearance, and then we'll select menus. And on our main menu, we've got a home link by now on Amazon about us. We've got one post there. And we need to add the blog. On the pages, we've got a blog page, which has not been added to the menu yet. So select blog, add to menu. And if you'd like to rearrange these things into different order, you just drag and drop. And actually, I don't want this top five healthy alternatives there anymore. That's a blog article, a blog post. A blog which is in here I feel it's kind of redundant so you can remove it you can maybe put it into the blog you can keep it you can do whatever you want here you know if you move it down here it'll be a drop down but I don't want it anymore there so if you click the triangle to open it and then remove it I will remove it but if you remove it remember this is permanent you have to, uh, um, you have to um, add it in again. Our menu has these items now. Now it has a blog. Remember to save this menu. If you're going to be forgetful about adding new pages to your menu, remember you can turn this option on here: auto add pages. Automatically add new top level pages to this menu. So if you create another one, another page like the shop, and you want it to automatically add itself to the menu, you can turn that on. I hardly use that because I have to, myself anyway, arrange them how I want. It doesn't know how I want them, it'll just put it at the end. What if I want shop, what if I want home, then shop? If I simply turn this on, WordPress will add the latest item to the bottom. I have to come back here anyway. So for mine, in, in my case, I don't, I don't use this auto feature anyway. All you have to, yeah, that's right, all you have to do is drag. The only trick is, wherever you drag it, see, if I drag it here, it's about to be a drop-down menu. See where the dotted lines are at. Make sure you drag it so that it's on the left side. 
indented to the left. Yes. So custom link means that it has a permalink address. And yes. Page means that you have a geometrical permalink address yet. Well, custom link is usually more for something that you're going off to some other website. This is going off to Amazon. And a page is that it's an actual page on your site. So um, home does say custom link, but that's oftentimes the home link is is a special kind of link, so it's custom. So that doesn't quite equate with permalinks and uh, default links. This is just to tell you, this is most likely a link off to someone's el someone else's website. These are links within your own site. So remember to save your menu when you make changes, and then you can go back to visit site. And when you visit site, now you'll see your menu, blog. If you click blog, here's your articles. It's built into the WordPress software that when you tell it over on the dashboard of reading settings, that was the point of that, it knows, go put the posts into that page. Just built in, it'll automatically start putting your posts there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what you type to that. Exactly. If you notice, and you click blog, we wrote here, um, read our recipes. That goes away, doesn't it? That placeholder text goes away to show the articles. So that placeholder goes away and it shows your articles. And so if we go, if you click back on the home, on the home um, link here, or the the link that's an active link to take us back to home, and this is what we wrote here. It's our home page. If you have a if you have a keen eye, you might see that it doesn't actually say home upon the upon the title. That's fine. That's normal. Uh, it that's why that's a custom link. It knows it knows where to go basically, but. Uh, I don't like that it says home. That's very passe. You don't really see on the home page anymore that it says home. It says something more meaningful because that's a little bit of extra space there where someone can uh, can type in some keywords. Uh, the big thing about uh, search, engine search engine optimization is oftentimes you have to think about if you take things out of context, do they still work? If you take home out of the context of this site, it'll work for any other site, therefore it's not specific. If you take this text out of the context of this site, it still makes sense more for this site than any other site. So we should change that. Instead of it simply saying home or welcome or something very generic, we have a little bit of space there to also write some keywords. So let's get some practice with that. A quick way to go back to edit any page that you're working on, you should have noticed, is there is a button up here to edit that page. We don't have to go back to the dashboard, back to the pages, click edit. We can edit any page or post directly here in any product once we add products and such. This is often a context sensitive menu that changes depending what you're looking at. I want to edit my home page, page, so I'll click edit page. And what I'm getting at is <coughs> this is my home page, it's the first thing that the site will show. I don't need to say home here, that's passe. It's not very useful for SEO. So I could write something like I could write, for example, my uh, 
cites uh, my business's slogan. Your favorite neighbor. Good bakery. So even though we had originally called this home, we can change it to whatever we want. We should think in terms about um, being found. When you make that change, go ahead and save or update, that is. Notice now at the top it says view page, so you can quickly go back and forth between edit page and view page. All right, so we've set a static page. We started with a with a blog page. Now we've got a static page, and the hybrid one, like the one of this client, that one is a little harder to do because it depends on the theme, it depends on widgets, it depends on a variety of things. Our particular theme um, is is a little limited, but what we could do is put a widget on the side here that displays the latest posts. I think this is fine for the moment here. We've, we've seen uh, the difference between the two and notice the setup that we need for a static page, static home page. Any questions so far? Do we need to add any pictures, I think, to the We would to have a more interesting looking site, but we've got other things to worry about, so you can add a picture if you'd like. But we'll definitely work, worry about pictures and such when we create products. Yes? So if my current work has functions like a blog, a blog where it has a push down menu, and, and I add a home page, Homepage tagged, you mean that it'll show it? Or what do you mean by tagged? I'm saying I already have I, I have an about page and then I have a page that functions like a blog, but it's not titled blog. So now I want to add a home page that will be a, st a static page. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna add another page and call it home and give it the options of being static. Pretty much. That okay. that's what should work. Yep, that's what's that's the point of, of this, that you are setting something to take over the home page instead of the blog. Okay. If it doesn't exactly work how you want, you can put it back to what it was, which is most likely your latest posts, and then we you can figure out how to make it work exactly how you want. But it's pretty easy to go back and forth between the two. Okay. 